Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or maybe welcome back, to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I put together my first set of cards using the May 2024 sheet load of cards printable. Now, if you don't yet have this month's free printable, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video where I tell you how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Not only will I be sharing my process video today where I have lots of tips and tricks for you, but my team of collaborators will also be sharing their sets for the month. To see the YouTube collaboration team videos, check out the playlist linked in the description box below, and I'll also have it linked at the end of this video. It's your one-stop shop to see all of the YouTube videos. Now, if you want to kind of jump around to different creators, I also have a channel link list down in that description box. To see what my Instagram team is creating, you can click on the link to the hashtag and it will pull up all of their sets. I'm super excited to see what everybody made this month, and if you are too, why don't you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Also sharing cards today is our May 2024 guest artist, Tracy of the Not Afraid of Color channel. Make sure that when you stop by her video that you click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And before I forget, channel members, make sure to keep watching to find out how you can download your bonus file this month, which is going to help you place that center piece of pattern paper. As I get into the process, I'll tell you about the products and tools that I'm using today. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my pattern papers today, I'm going to be using two from the Paper Roses Rainbow Poppies Collection Pack. In yesterday's video, I share more about why I chose these two pieces. I'm going to start by cutting rows off the top of the floral piece that are four inches tall. Then on the bottom, I'm going to cut some columns that are three and a quarter inches wide. This will leave a pretty big scrap at the end, and on the printable I do have some suggestions how to use this, and later I'll show you how I decorated the inside of my cards. Now I'm going to bring back in the first rows I cut that were 4 inches tall, and cut these into pieces that are 5 and a quarter inches wide. Now don't forget, you don't need to remember any of these dimensions. Check out yesterday's debut video to download the free printable. Finally, for the two small pieces that we cut, I'm going to cut those into pieces that are two inches tall. You will end up getting eight pieces from each of the pattern papers. For your next piece, you might cut it exactly the same as the first, but because the sheet I picked out only has kind of that splatter yellow on the top and bottom, I'm going to change the way I cut it just a little bit to make sure that that pattern is on the backer piece or pattern paper piece A. I'm going to start cutting in the same way with a row that is 4 inches tall, and then before I cut my next piece, I do cut off the branding strip. Now I'm going to rotate that around and cut another row that is 4 inches tall. So instead of having both of mine come from the top, it's going to come from the top and the bottom. Now for the other two columns that are 3 and a quarter inches wide, I just cut that from the middle section. And once again, I have that nice leftover piece to decorate the insides later. I continued cutting the second piece of pattern paper to finish getting the pieces just as with the first sheet. Next, it's time for CS1, which is a half sheet of coordinating cardstock. For me, I chose Prickly Pear by Gina K Designs. Now, because these pieces are so skinny, the first thing I'm going to do is cut them into two columns that are the final width that I need, and that is three and a quarter and four and a half. These pieces then get rotated, and I'm going to cut them in quarter inch sections. I need two of each size per card, so I cut these until I got 18 total pieces each. I did move it from right to left, just cutting off a quarter inch at a time. While I finished cutting those, I did have a special shout out. 
In the month of April, I had some channel members earn their one year membership badge. So I wanted to take a minute to say thank you to each of them. Scrolling up on screen now are their names. Thank you so much for your continued support. You keep me creating here on YouTube and help keep Sheetload free for all subscribers. If you're not already a member and you're interested in finding out more about the perks, you can click on the join button below this video or check out the description box for a link. Your next step might be to make the card bases by cutting four sheets of cardstock in half and then folding each of those pieces in half. I actually had some already done in my stash since I wanted to use white card bases, so I grabbed eight of those for my cards. This month's printable does have some special instructions, so you'll want to pay attention to those. They can be found right here in the middle of page one, and basically it's letting you know before you put your pattern papers onto your card bases, you need to put everything together first. This is because you're going to put your middle pattern paper on, and then the way that I had you cut these strips they're a little too long just to make sure that they worked out. So you'll want to add those and then trim off the edges before putting it onto your card base. And today I'll show you how to do that. For this step, you are gonna take one of the opposite patterns. So in this instance, it's gonna be the yellow pattern paper piece B, adhere to the center of the floral pattern paper piece A. Not only are there some special instructions this month, but there is also a channel member bonus. You'll see that when I try to center this pattern paper on here, because the border is so wide, it's not as easy to get it centered. So if you're a channel member, today over on the membership tab, which I will link the membership tab down in the description box, you are going to get access to a free cut file that is gonna help you make kind of a jig so you can center your middle pattern paper. Now, if you don't have an electronic cutter, I also have a PDF version you can download. So you could just print it onto a piece of paper and make a template and cut it on cardstock. Or if your printer handles cardstock, you could definitely um, print it onto there and then cut it out by hand. Now, I did go ahead and I put two layers together. You might want to do that as well, just to make sure your cardstock is thicker than your pattern paper. Now, let me show you how you're going to use this. This piece is meant to snuggle right up in the lower left hand corner of pattern paper piece A. Now you could also put it over on the lower right hand corner or one of the upper ones, whichever way works best for you. Then you're going to add your adhesive to the back of pattern paper piece B just like normal. And now instead of having to try to eyeball it to get it centered, you can just place that right into the corner of that cutout jig. I did decide to bring in a helper and that is my score buddy. This has that nice corner on there. If you don't have a score buddy, you could use a misty or a trimmer, something that has a right angle that you could fit this into. Now, instead of having to hold the jig and the background pattern paper together, all I do is put those two pieces in that left hand corner, the lower left hand corner of the score buddy, and those stay right in place while I add the adhesive and put pattern paper B in place. I continued with this same process until all of the pattern papers were layered together. Why don't you let me know one of your favorite crafty hacks down in that comment section below. 
Now that those were all adhered together, it was time to bring in the cardstock strips. Like I mentioned before, you need two of each size per card. The large ones are going to go horizontally, and you're going to want to start where the edge of pattern paper piece B lines up with the left edge of that cardstock strip. To add these to the card, I'm going to put a line of glue and then get my cardstock strip put in place. I did use liquid glue for this and that's so I had some wiggle time to get everything lined up as perfectly as possible. Once that first strip was in place, I rotated my card, added another line of glue, and then I used one of the shorter strips of cardstock. I again got it right up against the pattern paper and I butted it right up against the previous cardstock strip. And you just keep gluing and rotating until your four strips are down, and then I set these to the side to dry. I have mentioned that this month's sketch is my take on a fractured card. Normally these would have maybe a diamond in the center that would have the cardstock strips radiating out from it. So with that in mind, I have a crafty question for you. I would like to know, have you ever made a fractured card? Let me know down in that comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag crafty question. I gave all of these some time to dry and now it's time to bring in a little pair of scissors and snip off the excess from each side of the cards. I find for myself that flipping the piece over and putting one of my scissor blades right up against the edge of the pattern paper works well for me. It seems to trim them off right at the edge. After all of those were trimmed down, I brought in my card bases and I started adding these to the front center of each one. It gives just a little border on all of the edges. Now you could definitely use colored card bases if you wanted to for these. If it is a dark card base, I probably would add some lighter cardstock to the inside for the personal message. I continued adding these until all eight cards were finished. Now it's time to decorate the front. On this month's sketch, I do suggest a die cut greeting that maybe has a shadow. For myself, I'm going to be using this single hello die. Um, I mentioned yesterday, I'm not sure where it's from. A couple of you have given me suggestions, so I will try to link it below if I find the correct one. Now I did a little playing around off camera where I cut a copy in yellow and I liked it, but I wasn't sure if it was quite right. So I got out a dark gray cardstock and tried one in that too. I tried it individually. I tried layering them together. I got a little input from my daughter and we decided together that I would do the gray layered on top of the yellow with just a slight offset. Just like with the cardstock strips, I'm going to be using some liquid glue. This gives me just a little bit of wiggle time so I can make sure the offset looks pretty even before I press it firmly and let it dry. I did bring in a scrap of vellum there to catch any stray adhesive. And after I put adhesive on the back of the gray hello, I place it onto the yellow one. Again, just trying to get a slight offset and keep it uniform all the way across. When that was done, I then added glue to the back of the yellow one and got this placed onto the card front. Off camera, I die cut and adhered the rest of the sentiments together, and here I am just placing them onto the rest of the card fronts. I let these dry completely, and while I was off camera again, I went ahead and I decorated the inside of each of the card bases using some of those scraps that I showed you earlier. You know I always like to say that every card needs a little sparkle, so to finish these off, I brought in some clear and silver glitter enamel dots I had and added a trio to the front. I tried to make a triangle around the hello die cut. I added the trio of sparkly dots to each card, and here are some close-up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the May 2024 printable and got some tips along the way. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the Collaboration Team Creations. I know they'd love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. All of the links are down in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.